Hey there, community. Welcome to the Providence Podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At God's Face, we have all kinds of ways to stay connected, to deepen your faith, and to meet other people. You can sign up for our newsletter and stay connected at godspacecommunity.com. God's Face is a ministry of the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky, and we hope you stay connected with us as well. So now let's get started with our scripture reading and go from there. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. For it has been reported to me about you, my brothers and sisters, by Chloe's people, that there are rivalries among you. I mean that each of you is saying, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with the wisdom of human eloquence, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its meaning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our second reading from his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul says, I urge you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree in what you say and that there will be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and in the same purpose. That sounds so nice, doesn't it? Community would be so much easier if we all were united in the same mind. We'd probably have no divisions if we all agreed with each other, don't you think? Am I right? (laughs) It appears that real people don't really work that way. Real people think and feel very differently from each other, and that tends to make it harder to agree. Maybe there are times when we can come together with the same purpose, but the same mind? I think that's a pretty tall order. My community echoes this reading in some of our documents. For instance, our founder told us to be like, quote, true sisters. I don't know if you have siblings, but if you do, I'm guessing that you like me, disagree with them from time to time. When my sister and I were kids, our disagreements were more like fights, and there was a fair bit of screaming involved. Our founder was not an only child, and in fact, he had lots of siblings. Maybe they were better behaved in his house than we were in mine, but I'm guessing that when he said this, he knew the nature of siblings He was calling us to the best of what siblings can be, close in heart, even though we disagree. In the same spirit, our constitutions say, the bond of our unity is Jesus Christ calling us to be of one heart and one soul. That's lovely and inspiring, but in practice, being one heart and one soul is a tall order too. This may come as a great shock to all of you who aren't in religious communities, but even nuns disagree on things. True sisters, right? 
We don't fight like my blood sister and I did, but we do sometimes think and feel very differently from each other. Does that mean we're not unified? I don't know. I feel like we are unified. Even if we think about things in different ways, we are close in heart. It's likely not just religious communities who are a bunch of people of different minds seeking unity. In the Christian church, there are disagreements about doctrine and practice. And when disagreements get too big, sometimes churches even split from each other. Even within the same denominations, there can be divisions. Speaking as a Catholic, I see discord even in my own archdiocese and within institutions and parishes. When Christians, and particularly church leaders, are publicly duking it out, it's really just not a good witness. And I also wish we'd stop using divisive political terms like liberal and conservative in church contexts. But it turns out that there are divisions in religious circles, and churches can be political too. So what's the deal? Have we just chosen to ignore this call to unity? I actually don't think we've chosen to ignore it. When people come together, it's impossible for us all to see things the same way or to think and feel alike. So maybe unity is not really about agreement. Maybe it's really about listening and love. We know that the Spirit moves within each of us, and when we share with each other, we each bring a piece of the truth and a bit of the wisdom of the Spirit. We also bring ourselves with our gifts and limitations. Christianity within and among denominations can be a big, wide, tall tent. People who identify as progressive or traditional or liberal or conservative or middle of the road or simply just Christian all have something important to offer and to share with each other. When we listen to each other, we grow and we also deepen our community connections. Ultimately, We're unified when we care for each other and when we trust that, although we may have different perspectives, we're just doing the best we can to authentically share the gospel as we experience and understand it. This is what Paul is saying, too. It's not about being baptized into the philosophy of one person or another, no matter how wise or virtuous they are. We are all baptized in Christ, so it's about preaching the gospel. And that's something we do together, and we do that by our words and actions and attitudes. When we live this way, we can still be true community and whole and healthy community, even when we disagree with each other. I do feel a longing for unity that I don't always see. However, I also believe that unifying ourselves is a process, and leaning into that process moves us toward loving each other. Through our striving for unity, we get to know ourselves and each other and find God in both. The ultimate goal is love, and working for unity moves us toward love. Paul's right. We don't belong to one or another. We all belong to Christ. And because we belong to Christ, we belong to each other too, even when we disagree. So what is the call here? I don't think it's to conform our thinking. I mean, we probably just can't. It's impossible And perhaps God made us diverse for a reason, or for lots of reasons. When we listen to each other and honor the Spirit speaking within each person, we may not agree, but we will come to understand each other. 
When we seek to understand each other, we remember our common purpose, which is to share the gospel. Our diversity is beautiful and a gift. Our call is love. And in our love, we'll find our unity. Amen. So let's continue our reflection to see what God might be saying to us. After reflecting on this reading, what do you make of it? What's coming up for you? Have you ever felt a sense of unity, a common connection or a purpose with other people? What was that like and how did you get there? When you think about our common purpose as Christians, as followers of Christ, what is that common purpose, do you think? What is God trying to say to you in all of this? Maybe just take a moment of quiet to be with this and see what God has to say. Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to connect with God's space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you enter this week, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you. And may we all take good care of each other. Peace.